Don't worry, people. We have enough vaccines for one child per family. This pandemic has had a negative impact on people in multiple ways. As time ebbs on, businesses will close, and some of your favorite restaurants may or may not be amongst the survivors. Let's look at 10 reasons why 50% of restaurants may not survive the pandemic. Survive. Accessibility. Access denied. Access denied. Access denied. Okay, so even if restaurants do open back up and take all the precautions necessary, people still have to get there. That in itself may certainly be a deterrent for some folks who do not have a car. Public transport while running may not be the place that most people want to be right now. No, hard pass. Hard pass. So if restaurants traditionally do not have a lot of local walk-in customers, or they require a vehicle to access, then they are at risk of losing customers. Now you may think there's always Uber or taxis or that kind of thing. Well, that has become an added element to a night out for dinner. Taking an Uber or a cab would mean paying more out of pocket, and money is tight now for most. I declare bankruptcy! So that may not be an ideal option, but it also means exposing yourself to yet another person. Suddenly, the restaurants that are very close to your home become way more appealing than those far away, and that is just a fact. Inventory. Look at the bright side. I reduced your inventory for ya. When this all began and restaurants had to close, many of them lost a bunch of inventory. It wasn't every restaurant that was able to shift to delivery as if nothing happened. Even those who did move to delivery or pick up right away had to contend with all of the extra fresh produce and meat that they had on hand. What happened to the steaks that were in there when they closed? Considering the amount of people that were no longer able to be served inside, many, many restaurants took an inventory hit. They had to throw things away. They had to stop buying from suppliers. They had to manage what they had. That alone may have been enough to close some places already. Maybe some restaurants just lost too much expensive inventory and they no longer have the funds to restock for a reopening. Inventory is also extra hard to manage in a reopening because how much do you restock? There is no protocol for this type of thing, like when in a pandemic, never fear, just reduce your regular purchasing and inventory by 63%. No, unfortunately, that kind of very specific manual does not exist. Oh man! So restaurants are left to figure it all out, and that can be, and will continue to be, very hard for most. Space. And here's the thing, it'll give us so much extra space in our room to do activities. Let's be real. If an independent restaurant has a very small space with tables crammed together, then there will obviously be some issues with resuming business as normal. Normal as in pre-pandemic. Businesses will no longer be able to have strangers sitting nearly on top of each other. It is just not practical from a health perspective or even from a social perspective. My personal space. <laughs> Many people will not want to be that close to people they don't know. So will restaurants be putting up plexiglass barriers? Will that be enough to keep them open and in business? The space issue is huge. Unless everyone is keeping their cool and following the mandated rules to maintain a happy and healthy environment, then there is a chance that space, or lack of space, becomes the issue that breaks the camel's back, so to speak. Hang on! Trust. Do you trust me? Customers will have to have some serious trust to go into a restaurant or even order pickup or delivery from them. Why? It's a pandemic! Duh. People may be uncertain whether or not a restaurant is abiding by the rules of conduct, and that may deter them from going to the restaurant, which in turn would lead to businesses going under. Restaurants are now facing even higher standards to keep their customers coming through the door. Customers will want to know, more than ever before, that the chefs cooking their meals are wearing the proper gear so that the food is in no way contaminated or put into sanitary jeopardy. Additionally, customers will want to know that the waiters carrying out their food are also taking the proper precautions. From the time the food is made to the time it is in front of you, anything can happen. Moreover, owners will likely be pretty strict about mask wearing and glove wearing, and that may rub some workers the wrong way. Then you may have situations in which it is kind of the other way around. You know, the old switcheroo. 
Maybe the owners are more relaxed about the rules than, say, the employees are. So trust issues may potentially be the cause of a bad atmosphere and negative working environment. It is important for everyone to be on the same page in order for a reopening to be executed properly. It is, after all, all about trust. Outbreak into your cage outbreak monkey. <laughs> so it's probably fair to say that if an outbreak was in fact reported as originating in a restaurant, then that restaurant would be in serious trouble. Oh no, 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 no. No one would want to go back to the place that infected a bunch of people. That's just natural. It is sad and it sucks for any restaurant that may find itself in that situation, but that is the reality of operating during a pandemic. Furthermore, if and when something like that happens, it might scare a whole bunch of others into not ordering from or going to any restaurants to eat. So outbreaks are a major player in the reopening and longevity of a restaurant. Yes, many restaurants will reopen, but the real question is, will they last? I don't know. That's a good question. Staff. How intelligent do you have to be to take a food order? It was already hard enough to find reliable staff to work at restaurants. So now, in a pandemic, finding and keeping strong staff members must be an even greater feat. From the point of view of a restaurant staff member, there are suddenly so many things to consider that may make you less likely to want to keep going into work. They have to think about who they are bringing any potential infection home to. Do they have kids? Do they have a spouse or partner who has a compromising health condition? Do they themselves have a health condition? Heck, if you had asthma, something that may never have been an issue at work before, you may be realizing that now it is a problem and you may not want to be working. I have asthma. Back off! There have been stories all over the world about people not going into work, whether it was in long care homes or in grocery stores. So why would restaurants be any different? Maybe staff will be gung-ho at the beginning. Maybe they will be keen because they need to get out of the house and make some cash. But who's to say they will keep coming in if the risk rises and a second wave hits? The minute restaurants have one or two staff members drop out and they cannot find replacements, then they run the risk of not being being able to keep up with demand. There is no knowing what staff members will need to do right now to keep themselves and their loved ones safe. And the uncertainty of whether or not a restaurant can keep up with their staffing needs may be too much for some. It's too much. You can't run a restaurant if there is no one there to run it and keep the cogs turning. Parenting. I haven't slept in four years. Okay, so think about all those folks who have kids and will not be able to go out because they may not feel comfortable getting a babysitter and can no longer leave the kids with Gran and Gramps. Seriously, date night for parents is going to look very different. Obviously, this will depend on the parent and the familial support system around them. Maybe some parents have siblings that they wouldn't eventually mind leaving their kids with so they can have an escape. Date night tonight! But that is not the case for everyone. There are many parents out there who would usually just hire a sitter or just have a grandparent take care of their kids so they can have a night on the town. With the risk of serious illness from the pandemic being higher in our elderly, we know that it wouldn't be wise to put grandma or grandpa at risk for a seemingly frivolous thing like dinner at a restaurant. Babysitters pose a different kind of risk. They may or may not have been out and about on the town. There is no real way of knowing who they have seen and where they have been, and surely that can freak some parents out. I'm freaking out right now, man. Now, it's clear that restaurants will not be going out of business just because they lose a portion of the date night crowd, but it does have an impact on the bottom line. Date nights matter, and sometimes those couples rack up big bills. Losing the parent date night customers may not be the end of the world, but it is nonetheless one example of a group of people who can no longer just casually go out to dinner. Pre-pandemic planning a date night was hard enough. Funding. Evening, neighbor. Low on funds again? Yes, sir. Just like you, restaurants Yoink. need to pay rent. Rent? or they have a mortgage to pay. While some governments have put programs in place to help out financially, not everyone is applicable. Not only that, those bits of aid, while so appreciated, will not, cannot, and do not last forever, and many need to be paid back. 
So restaurants may close due to the sheer fact that they cannot afford to stay open. Eviction is a serious fear for many. Some spots that have high traffic because they are in a downtown area or near an attraction also have very high rent. You owe me rent. So if they don't have the regular traffic or tourism, they are in serious trouble. There is no amount of takeout or delivery that can pay for some of these places' rent. The cost of running may be just too much and not worth it. It is also important to consider that some places may already have been in a tight financial situation before the pandemic hit. So if there is nothing in the bank, then there is nothing to pay rent with. Even if there is some leeway and they only need to pay a portion of the rent for now, some restaurants may not even be able to do that. Supply. Ah, supplies for your journey. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Okay, so imagine this. You are a fish restaurant, and you always get your fish from a specific fishmonger. Was she just go in there and say, give me a fish? Pretty much, yeah. You have a system. Then a pandemic occurs. You close your restaurant for a while, and then finally it is time to reopen. But oh no, your fishmonger is not in business anymore, or they have yet to reopen. All of a sudden, you have trouble getting your fish supplied on a regular basis, and you cannot make the dishes that are a core part of your business. So you think, okay, deep breaths. The next logical step would be to find a new place to get the fish supply you need. But what if you can't because there are none? What if you do, but they eventually also have to close? What if a new supplier is way more expensive and you cannot afford it? Oh no, then maybe you have to close your restaurant because you cannot actually serve the food that you offer on your menu. Supply is everything, and supply chains are getting pretty lopsided and topsy-turvy right now. What a topsy-turvy world we've come to. So supply is a reasonable concern and may be the reason some restaurants close. Fear. Ha! Ah, ah. There is one major reason that restaurants may not survive this pandemic, and that is fear. People are straight up afraid. Is going to a restaurant worth possibly risking your life? Is ordering in for pickup good enough? Is ordering in for delivery safe? Do we trust the restaurant and its employees? Do we trust the people sitting next to us? You ask a lot of questions, Morty. There are so many factors. There are so many things to be considered. Not all of the fears are necessarily valid, but most of them need serious consideration. And with folks understandably staying away, the result is fewer people going to restaurants. Because when it comes down to it, anytime there are a lot of people in one room right now, it is cause for some fear. So it is really hard to know what is right. The inability to know for sure may cause some folks to just avoid dealing with restaurants at all. This next chapter is sure to be a rough one for all restaurants. Restaurants. Fingers crossed that most of them stay afloat. Fingers crossed. Stay right here and tap on another one of our great videos. Smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.